Hi, I'm Stavros. Good morning and welcome. And in today's video, I'll be showing you all around this new Volvo FH 500 with turbo compound. So I'll be showing you all around the exterior first, then we'll hop inside and go down through all the interior features. And then I'll be getting hooked underneath the trailer and getting it out on the road and talking all about the fuel efficiency of this new turbo compound. Let's go. So this FH500 with turbo compound is from McCarthy Commercials in Limerick. They were very kind to give us a loan of this truck for a full week just to give it a good test drive. But I've already clocked up over 1000 kilometers in this truck. So I'll be talking all about how that went when we get hooked under our trailer shortly and go for our drive. So you see there, this is the Globetrotter cab. Now you can get an XL cab and an XXL cab if you want an even bigger bunk and more space in your cab. This is the six by two configuration. Uh, the midlift there is just a pusher midlift. It's not a steering midlift. Yeah, the FH. Now the diesel capacity is 790 liters. So we've got a 550 and a 240. Now the great thing about the Volvos is, right, you can get a living battery. So you can get it positioned here on the passenger side and it powers everything in your cab when you're parked up at night. So you're not drawing from the main battery. So it's 900 euro extra to have fitted to your Volvo. But the downside is you will be down 130 liters of diesel. But it's well worth considering your living battery from Volvo, uh, not to be drawing extra power from all the electrical equipment in the cab. And we have a 65 liter add blue tank. Now, of course, you can get the add blue tank positioned on the chassis, but you will lose diesel capacity. And we have the fixed fifth wheel there. All standard tires, 31580, 22.5s. And that is your outside locker there. That's where you would put all your wet, uh, smelly items. But uh, yeah, looking quite well, the Volvo. Let me just continue walking around. We have the LED lamps there at the back. McCarthy's just put checker plate there to protect the battery pack and we have aluminium air tanks and diesel tanks and yeah the uh you would top up your add blue just by pulling that open there so just clip that back in and yeah so let me just open up the grill give you a quick look at that uh, i just want to show you one quick feature i just unclipped it there already uh yeah so we do have the dipstick there and top up of your your oil of course and our washer fluid, but this is a very nice feature I like, look. Uh, so you just switch a button in the cab and you can lift your cab electronically. <laughs> so that's a great feature, isn't it? Uh, to be able to... Uh, do that nice and easy without having to pump your cab and of course we do have these two steps as well you can just pull them down there to climb up and clean your windscreen of course so let's just close up that now this truck is equipped with Dynafleet so it's an app you can put on your phone and your fleet transport manager can keep an eye on all the drivers that are connected to the Dynafleet app and it monitors the performance of the truck, your driver's hours, and yeah, it's a very good app. You'd want to check that out from Volvo. So the side locker here on the driver's side, very good size. It's slightly bigger than the one on the passenger side because that one there has the auxiliary heater, the night heater fitted to it. So uh, yeah, that's pretty good. And we have the warning triangle and storage there underneath the bunk. That's how you would access that. So just close it up hop inside and yeah we have the fire extinguisher the remote for the back axle all the adjustment on your driver's seat and yeah there's just covers there on the driver's seat let me just show you what they're like underneath there you go so a textile and a part leather finish now we do have the eye shift gearbox so yeah we have neutral auto and manual mode and reverse and into neutral and we can knock it down out of the way so uh yeah and we have a uh, economy and power mode and your l button at the back there as well so yeah let's uh 
just walk you around the cab and give you a quick look at that. Uh, the cup holders there, storage in there, 12 volt, 24 volt socket, and our pull out drawer there as well. Uh, over here we have the emergency brake assist function and your diff lock traction control for lifting the mid lift and for leveling off the cab suspension, your hill hold function and regen on your exhaust system and the rear reversing buzzer, we can turn that off and your lane departure warning, your electronic handbrake, all the controls here for the stereo. Let's just start it up and give you a sound of the engine. Now there's great adjustment on the steering wheel as well, so let's just turn that around. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> and let's just hoot the horn as well. And this horn. <laughs> You've got two little horns in it. Okay, we don't have any air horn on this truck. So let's give it a couple of revs here. There we go. I'm just gonna close the door buttons here for locking unlocking windows and your heated mirrors and there's also a timer switch there on the heated mirror so you have an option to time it or just leave it on so uh, yeah that is pretty good pretty okay display here it's probably showing its age now at this stage this display but let's go down through the menu here and we can just show you exactly how much I got for my fuel consumption so you see there 10.2 so that's pretty good now I did get it up to 10.4 miles per gallon as well and you see there on the display as well if I put it into see third gear and I can switch it to manual mode so yeah very good and back into neutral and our rev counter here as well so let's give it a couple of revs and over there we have an add blue gauge, engine temperature, and our fuel gauge. So yeah, there's only 21,400 kilometers on this truck. So let's roll back up the window. There we go. I really like this blind as well. And I really like this blind. <laughs> and that covers across the whole windscreen there. So uh, that's quite good. So that's it now at its lowest position, of course. You can't have it going any lower for safety reasons. Uh, it does go fully down on the Renault Magnum, but there is a safety catch that you have to physically walk over and unclip if you want it to go down the rest of the way, but I really like that blind. And we have the sunroof, or as Volvo call it, the escape hatch. Uh, yeah, so you would hop out of that in an emergency. And I have the fridge there pulled out. So let's have a look at the size of that. I've got, uh, I still have to take out some of this stuff and there is a freezer part as well, so that will free, freeze stuff. I did test it guys, it does work. Yeah, it iced up one of my bottles of uh, drink, so uh, yeah, and we have a storage container here as well. Now it is hindered with the eye shift, getting it fully open, but there you go. Um, yeah, so let's continue walking around. I'm just going to turn off the radio. The mute button it would be nice to have a mute button on the steering wheel as well okay uh, now I really like this as well okay uh, when I slept in the truck uh, there last night I just went down through all of the features on this look so yeah not only can you turn on look um, the night eater and you can time it so we can use our radio controls look door locks you can unlock the doors turn on your lights open the windows and we can even open the sunroof and uh, you see it roof hatch so that's uh, very good and we can turn on our interior lights so they're leds and i really like this one as well so they're a nice touch now it is pre-wired for a television so you can get that fitted if you wish and yeah this is for our ambient lighting so we can have that turned on and also it comes on in the footwell there you go so yeah, I'm six foot two and my head is about this close to the roof. So if you want more space, go for the XXL cab. And all of the lockers there have lights in them, except for that one, of course. And yeah, they're quite nicely done. Uh, I like the way they lift up like this instead of, you know, the door. 
because uh, if you just want to lift it up a small bit while you're sitting in the seat, uh, you then don't have to reach up and then pull down a door. So I think they're a very good thing to have uh, on the Volvo and slide open that locker as well. So the bunk, you can't extend the bunk any bigger. That's it at its uh, standard size, but it's quite comfortable. Slept in it last night. Now, if you find it too comfortable, you can get a firm option if you wish. Some drivers actually like to have them a bit more firm than that, but I slept in it very well last night. And yes, anything else I need to show you around? Yeah, we have a, a 24 volt socket and your 12 volt there as well. And we do have the USB and our auxiliary input uh, there as well. So yeah, over here, um, we just have more exterior lights and that is your cab tilt function here. So yeah, that's all quite nice. Now the truck will shut itself off, but if you want to override the auto shutdown, just press your foot on the brake pedal and the engine will stay on. So uh, yeah, the air conditioning controls, it would be nicer if they were positioned over here because when you're driving it, you're kind of moving your head to the left to see the controls. So yeah, they should have been put over here and the air vent should have been up here somewhere and you could have uh, moved all these buttons up here. So yeah, uh, I would have completely have redesigned the dashboard uh, had I been working at Volvo. But anyway, that's just my opinion as a driver. And we have the leather finish there on the steering wheel and all our phone controls. And the volume buttons as well, they shouldn't have been put there. Uh, the volume buttons should have been put up here and for changing your track here. But these buttons for going down through the menu should have been put down here. So yeah, just another detail. If Volvo's updating this truck, move those volume buttons, please. Now the windscreen is a bit narrow. I would definitely prefer a bigger windscreen, but the side windows are very good. Good visibility out of them and the mirrors are good and you can see in between them, very well done. So yeah, just your ambient lighting there as well. So guys, I think it's time to get it started, get underneath a trailer and see what it's like on the road. The FH500 Turbo Compound. <laughs> in the Volvo, the FH500 with turbo compound from its straight six cylinder diesel engine. 2,800 Newton meters of torque. So you're probably asking, what is the turbo compound system? Well, it's a waste heat recovery system that uses a turbine that captures energy from the exhaust gases and converts it into additional torque on the crankshaft, therefore improving engine efficiency. And it costs an extra four and a half thousand euro on top of a normal FH. So the turbo compound can also be got for the 460 horsepower FH. It's also available for that truck. So at the moment, it's only available on two trucks in the Volvo range. There's no mention as yet of it going to a higher output Volvo. So we'll just have to wait on that one. But yeah, you do get an additional 300 Newton meters over the 460 and the normal 500 FH. So some of you are probably wondering, where does this lie against the 540 uh, horsepower Volvo FH? I mean, people will look at the figures and think, well, that truck only has 2,600 Newton meters of torque, whereas this one has 2,800 Newton meters. Well, it all comes down to the power delivery and of course the 540 horsepower FH has a higher kilowatt power in its engine anyway. 
So you've got 397 kilowatts as opposed to this truck, which has 368 kilowatts of power. So um, yeah, it's all delivered differently in the rev range as well. So if you were to compare the torque delivery on both the 540 and this 500 turbo compound, the 540, its torque delivery comes in at between 1,000 and 1,460 RPM, whereas this truck, it comes in between 900 and 1,250 RPM. So the power comes in on this truck lower down the rev range just to maximize fuel efficiency. So who would this truck appeal to? Well, the likes of ourselves, doing groupage work all around Ireland and even long haul um, transport operations, they would love to use this truck as well just to save on fuel and I've been told it's more efficient on add blue as well so judging on our gauge um, I've only used up a quarter of the 65 litre tank and I've clocked up over 1000 kilometers so that's pretty good um, yeah so I have been averaging around 10.2 I did get it up to 10.4 miles per gallon and at one, one point I even had it higher than 10.4, but then it went back down pretty quick. So yeah, pretty good average there between 10.2 and 10.4 for our work. But there's no load on this trailer today. It's just empty. Couldn't find any trailer with a heavy load. So uh, we just pulled out the Denison trailer, but quite a comfortable truck, even on the front axle, even though it's not on air, it is still a comfortable front axle. Uh, the rear axle is on four airbags and the midlift is also on an air ride suspension so we do have great comfort especially when that midlift is sitting on the ground uh, you do get a uh, nice stability around the bends also but i'm going to turn off the motorway now and i'm going to use my engine brake three stage auxiliary brake here on the volvo and yeah, it works quite well. If you want extra stopping power, just knock it down a gear and it will give you even extra retardation on the auxiliary brake. But yeah, you also have a B mode as well. If you wanted to knock down a gear and give you even more stopping power, but yeah, it's pretty good. Let's knock it back off there. But yeah, it's um, performing quite well, this Volvo. I would be happy to drive this on a regular basis. There are a few things that need improving on the interior. Um, it's beginning to show its age, as I said. So hopefully Volvo will improve them at some point. Now with the new FH coming, you are going to have digital screens and it's gonna be given a, a bit of a makeover, but nothing too substantial from what I've seen but uh, yeah we'll just have to wait until we take it for a drive and see how they have improved various things on the interior that need uh, improving but yeah I'm going to uh, put it into manual mode just before we go up the hill and we get a sound of the engine 13 liter straight six cylinder diesel engine okay into manual mode and let's power it on Manual mode is pretty good and then just flick it back into auto mode and let the gearbox do its business. So yeah, the iSave Turbo Compound, pretty nice truck to drive. So let's get it uh, down to 80 kilometers and you can see there it's revving in very low. Look, 950 RPM. <laughs> yeah, it's revving in quite low. But yeah, the driving position is very nice on the Volvo. I do like the adjustment on the steering. The seat is comfortable. The vision outside the side window, very good. But as I said already, the windscreen, they do need to improve and have it a bit bigger so you have better visibility down low. But other than that, 
it's a uh, quite a nice truck to drive so yeah comparing it to the 540 i mean the 540 would be very good for say forestry work or um, tipper work um that truck would be uh, quite good for that but this as i said it's just more concentrated on long haul and yeah so will a volvo see its way back into the rory lynch transport fleet after 26 years having no volvo <laughs> so yeah we'll have to see on that one guys uh i think it's uh well overdue to get a volvo back in the fleet but if i was going to recommend one to rory lynch i would definitely say go for the 500 tc it has performed quite well but the eye shift gearbox it does change gear very smoothly uh, i would be very happy with that and of course we have eco and power mode as i said and yeah they really need to move it from this position though they need to have a column stock uh, gear selector where you can just get down through your gears just using a column stock but um yeah they need to move this get rid of it out of there okay let's make our way back to base a couple of hoots of the horn and the small horn yeah uh, no air horn guys sorry about that and that's where i'm going to wrap it up from the volvo fh500 with turbo compound quite a nice truck to drive comfortable spacious interior and yeah a few things need updating as i said but other than that I would recommend this truck and who knows if one will end up in the fleet at some stage we'll have to check on that one but uh, yeah, a huge thanks to the McCarthy Commercials in Limerick for giving me the loan of the truck for the week. Really do appreciate it. And hopefully we'll get more trucks and show you what they're all about. But yeah, I was very happy with the way this one drove. But guys, I'm going to leave you all there. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And I'll chat to you all again next weekend for another video. Take care, guys. Thanks. Cheers!